What's going on everybody? So I have gone from Costa Rica to here in Puerto Rico. That accent is spot on. This is my first time here in Puerto Rico. I've wanted to come here for a long, long time because the threatened Puerto Rican boa, which is one of the coolest boas in the world, they live in caves and they kind of hang from stalactites and in the morning when the bats come back into the cave from partying all night and then again in the evening when they go out to party all night, those boas are sitting there in ambush dangling from the stalactites and they'll grab those bats right out of the air. So again, I'm going to be picked up in, oh crap, 10 minutes. What do you think I should do? Do you think I should wear this shirt or this shirt or this shirt, maybe even that shirt? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Anyway, I got to get all this stuff crammed into this suitcase. I've got to go through my GoPros. I've got to go through my other camera gear. And I have got to get ready because my friends David and Kenny are coming to pick me up right now. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, so we have Kenny here. Kenny has one of the most amazing reptile collections in Puerto Rico. We are going to film at your place. That video is going to be coming up soon. We also have David back there. Let and, and see you. And uh, you've got a YouTube channel. I'm yes. going to put that link in the description below. You've got to start uploading. Now, now you're... you're, you're <laughs> oh, and, you're just going to hold me a candle right, over there, right? That's right. I'm going to help you without uploading. <laughs> but you're, you have a reptile channel in Spanish, though. Yeah, it's in Spanish. So, that's, in Spanish. so for all the Spanish-speaking reptile fanatics out there, go to David's channel. But we are getting on the road here. We've got, what, about an hour and a half drive, and then we're going to be at a spot to where... What, we got about an hour and a half hike from that spot? Yeah, you can actually, if you can get capture that. Oh, look at that, look at those cliffs. All right, so we are going to cliffs like that. Not those specific cliffs, but they look like that. We are on the road. We are gonna find these boas. Okay, so those guys just literally dropped me off right in the middle of nowhere with all the camera equipment here. I, um, um, all right, so we got to kind of bushwhack up this mountain here to get to these caves where we are definitely 100% going to find boas, right, David? 101% times zero. Times zero. <laughs> That's a little disconcerting. This isn't just like muddy. This is slippery going up this mountain. Yeah. All you right. saw how tall they were, right? All right, well... This is why a lot of herpers have never seen a Puerto Rican boa in the wild. Right here. This is the reason. All right. Off we go. Kenny, you're good. Kenny, how you doing back there? I need a gym. We, yeah, we, all three of us do. <laughs> We've only been doing this for, uh, what, three minutes so far? Oh. And listen to us. Do we need to make base camp here and continue on in the morning? <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> Look at that. That's a big old cane toad. That's small though. Boink. All right. <laughs> uh, so supposedly a few kids that you get good luck. Well, and but if, not here. And if you lick it, this trek is going to be much easier. All right, we'll put him back. See you, big toad. Now, those are not native here, are they? No, those are. Those are invasive. Those are invasive. Supposedly they introduced them because. There's some uh, uh, species of beetles here. Look at this, look at this, a little snake. I killed it? Look at this. Oh, that's that's the one that you wanted to find. Look at this. <laughs> this is a Puerto Rican boa. No, that's not a Puerto Rican <laughs> This little snake was right on the trail. You stepped right over it. That's usually my trick. <laughs> Wow, so this is a little baby Puerto Rican garter snake and these guys get what about They're one meter? Models, so yeah. about three feet. So like any other garter snake in the world, but look at this little guy That is just amazing And yeah, he was just literally right on the trail So we just literally right there was where we saw the marine toad and here we have a little Puerto Rican garter snake. That is just amazing and look at that a baby one. So He's that recently, just a baby he just had a few. Like I would say one month. Yeah, I was gonna say he's probably only a couple of weeks to a month old. 
All right, this trip just got awesome. All right, so I'm seeing this stuff on the trail. These guys are all over the trail, these little snails, but they're super thin. That is really cool. Here's one of those snails that actually has a snail in it. Those are cool. I've never seen snails like that before. Maybe I should start Dave Kaufman's snail adventures. <laughs> no, that's not ever going to happen. It's going to be the slowest channel on YouTube. <laughs> you see there? There might be just a couple of trees that you can hold you, but that's a... Uh, and then it's straight down the cliff. 300 feet. 300 oh. feet down the cliff. You can't even see it here. Nope. I can't even see it, and I'm here. But so here. right there, that's 300 feet down. And if I slip on this stuff, it's game over for all of my YouTube channels. All right, so this is very slippery, wet rocks, 300 feet down. Whoa! Oh, man, this is a lot harder than it looks on this video to get through this thick crap. <laughs> all right, so we are taking our first break. We've gotta be, what, at least? One third. Two third, what, one third? One third. One third. <laughs> Did you hear that, Kenny? One third of the way. So he's closer to the car, right? It's closer to the car, right. Can I just tell you both how much I appreciate you being just out of shape as I am? <laughs> <laughs> it really takes the pressure off of me. All right, look at this, guys. There's another big chubster of a toad. All right, I'm not getting in there to film you, buddy. You just go have a hopping good day. Ah, that was so lame, so terribly lame. Look at this. Look at that, I'm getting right up on him. Yeah. But man, all right, so what kind of anole is that? That's just a Puerto Rican common brown anole. So this is a Puerto Rican brown anole. They're, they're common and you can find them anywhere in the islands from the cities all the way up to here in the mountain. Okay. So these guys are really common. You can find these down in the cities all the way up here to here in the mountains. Look at that. That is a cool snail here on Dave Kaufman's Snail Adventures. I have no idea what it is. Therefore, this channel, Dave Kaufman's Snail Adventures, actually sucks. All right. Man, that was some seriously hard work coming up this mountain to get here. But man, I think this is gonna be worth it. Look at this, everyone. Look at this. David está aquí. Llega el gringo y lleva la cueva allá. Yep. I'll, uh, right, I'll translate what he's saying. He's saying that he is so honored to be here today <laughs> with Brian Cusco, who apparently he thinks I am. All right, so we have finally made it to this amazing cave. This is the home of the endangered Puerto Rican boa, one of the rarest boa species in the world. Obviously, we just spent a lot of energy climbing up that mountain to get to this cave. Man, I hope those boas are in here, but look at this cave. This is amazing. Look at that huge, big, black, dangling stalactite. And uh, all of this cave painting here is probably from a different culture because we're the first humans that have ever been here, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at this though, 1961. Oh, we should get our... 1951. Wow, that wasn't even in this century. All right, guys, we are going in and hopefully we are going to see what we came here to see. Oh man, this is not made for tall people at all. But man, it is really dark in this bat cave. Bat cave? You adopted the dark, Batman. I was born in it, molded by it, Batman. <laughs> and then somebody put some burnt jeans on that stalactite there. <laughs> People are crazy. But look at this. Oh, look at this. That is a big honking cockroach. Look at the size of that thing. That is just weird. Boink. Oh my God, look at this. Look at all those cockroaches. Holy crap, look at this, guys. Look at how big those things are. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so we just came into this chamber. Look at this. So there's multiple entrances to this one cave. Look at how unbelievably beautiful this is. 
Look at those stalactites up there. And look at these stalagmites. The way I always remember that is that stalactites hang on tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites are down on the ground where the mites are. Stalactites, stalagmites. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I invented that. All right, so these bats are starting to get active. They're flying all around me. And it's evening now, and this is the time where we kind of hope that these snakes are gonna come out. However, unfortunately, we're here in December, which is the worst time of year to be here because these boas will go into a kind of a dormancy, but it's like a semi-dormancy. So they are going to be active, even though this is their dormant period, but it's gonna make our job to see one 10 times harder. All right, and then to complicate our search, it just started downpouring out there. Yeah, so if that rain continues, that means not only are we getting off this mountain in the dark, but we're also climbing off this mountain in the rain. Joyous. Well, guys, unfortunately, the rain is getting worse. The bats aren't even leaving the cave because of the rain. Everything is cooled down. There's now a cool breeze rushing through this cave. There is very little chance that we are going to find a boa if we stay here any longer. So we are going to call it a night for today, but we are going to come back out here another day. Hopefully the weather cooperates and we're going to be able to see this boa. But listen, I'll tell you, you know, sometimes you work really hard, climb a mountain to get to a cave and still not see what you came out to see. And you know, that's part of herping. I don't know that I'm really disappointed because half of the adventure is actually coming to places like this. It's just really icing on the cake to find what you came for. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? All right guys, so it is a brand new day, brand new opportunities to find the snake. We are going through this forest right now up to another cave system. We've been looking for this snake. Those are gunshots. Probably not meant for us. We're gonna continue on, but we have been looking for this snake for four days now. We found bupkis. But this cave that we're going to, whoa, 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 whoa. But this cave that we're going to at the top of this mountain may be our last opportunity to find this snake if we make it up there alive. It was raining all day. This is totally muddy, totally slippery, rocky terrain. But at least the path is nice. Man, listen to that. You can hear all the cokey frogs calling. That's our call right there, Koki, Koki. Those frogs are found only on the island of Puerto Rico and nowhere else. Oh man, we are going to either get shot out here or we're gonna slip and fall on this mud. <laughs> and then oh, get shot. <laughs> and then get shot. I'm in a lot of pain down here. If somebody could lower a rope. Whoa, oh jeez. <laughs> I am so glad that rut is there. That would have been the end of reptile adventures right there. Okay. God dang it. That's not, yeah, that's your organic rope, oh, not GMO. Man. <laughs> man, walking on this mud is like just walking on a big pile of slippery puke. Oh, jeez, I'm going down. Uh, so I just took a spill. Look what I did to my seventh favorite pair of shorts. Oh, man. I can only wear these four or five and maybe six more times. All right, we are there. Holy buckets. How you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for asking. I gotta say though, this one was so much easier to get to than the other one. Oh, this is just the first one. This is one of those hollows. Yeah, this is... this is the nearest one to the entrance. Oh, I see. We still have like four to go. Oh, man. Unless we find the snake. Look at that. That is amazing. I do believe that's Instagram worthy. Yep. Alright, and then look at this. You come down here and this cave just completely opens up into this huge cavern. There sure is a lot of bat crap around here. Oh, floor. Careful. Cuidado. <laughs> that's Spanish. I don't know if you recognize that or not. All right, look at this, guys. This is the first scorpion we've seen in the caves. It's maybe like a centuroides. I don't know, comment below if you know what scorpion that is. This floor 
is really slippery with guano. That's bat crap. Can you smell that ammonia? And yeah, and the air quality in here is not good at all because of all the ammonia. And I'm already slipping on this bat crap. And somewhere up ahead, it's straight down. And this floor is as slippery as mud. Bat butt mud, actually. Look at that, that is not mud. That is piles of guano. So there is so much bat guano and ammonia in this cave that the air quality is so bad that it can literally burn our lungs and permanently damage our lungs. So we are only going to be able to be in this cave for no more than 20 minutes because we can do permanent damage to our lungs if we stay any longer in this cave. Holy crap, look at this whip scorpion. That is the biggest one yet. Come here, I wanna measure you. Look at that. And if that one isn't big enough, <laughs> look at that one. Come here. That one was bigger. I don't know where he just went. He ran off. Okay, all right, we got one. I think we got one. Where? It's way up there, way up there. Oh, holy shit, there he is. We got him. We got him. Look at that. Oh, man, I have never <laughs> been so relieved to find a snake in my life. There he is. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, there he is. And he's hunting. Oh, my God. Oh, Ed, that is fantastic we got him dude all right that is the biggest high five oh my god yes but look at that beautiful snake we found one of the most rare and previously endangered snakes in the world this is the puerto rican boa most of the boas that are in this cave uh, when we actually started exploring there were close to none People we used to kill them all the time. So since this was designated a natural reserve almost three years ago, he's protected. So no one's gonna keep bothering him or anything like that. Oh man, have a look at this beautiful snake. What it took to actually find this snake, which at one point was one of the most endangered boa species in the world. Now, thankfully, due to conservation efforts, it has recently been elevated to threatened. And one of the reasons why this snake became endangered and was almost extinct was, and I'm not joking, for snake oil. When the first Europeans came here, they would catch these snakes by the hundreds, maybe even thousands, to extract snake oil. And I don't ever want to know how they extracted the oil from the snake, but the sad thing about that is that even today, some of the locals here will come up and take these snakes and extract the oil to literally sell snake oil. But again, thanks to vigorous conservation efforts, this snake is no longer endangered. It is now threatened, but it still remains an extremely rare boa. You guys just saw exactly what it took for us to find this snake. We've been searching for this snake for three or four days, climbing mountains, spelunking through what, maybe half a dozen caves, coming up empty-handed repeatedly, and then finally, we found this guy. When you go through so much effort to find this snake and then finally do, this is one of the greatest herpetological finds that I have yet found. This is absolutely amazing. Woo! <laughs> But just look at that pattern that he has and look at that iridescence. When a snake has iridescence like that, it is the sign of a healthy snake. If he was dull and had really muted colors, that is the sign of a snake that is not doing well. But the fact that he has that iridescence on his body, that tells me that this is a perfectly beautiful and healthy snake. This is absolutely amazing. So, whew, now, We've got to make that trek down the mountain, having finally had success in finding one of the greatest finds that I have ever had anywhere in the world. 
the Puerto Rican boa. This is absolutely astounding. So real quick guys, I wanna thank all of my Patreon supporters. I sincerely appreciate all of your support. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure from here in Puerto Rico, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.